Math 1332, Chapter 3, Symbolic Logic. Section 3, Types of Statements. Video 3, De Morgan's Laws for Logic. You may recall in Chapter 2 about set theory that De Morgan's Laws addressed taking complements of unions and intersections. Specifically, excuse me, specifically, one of De Morgan's Laws said that the complement of a union is equal to the intersection of the complements. So the complement of A union B equals A complement intersect B complement. The other of De Morgan's laws looked pretty much the same, except the union and intersection were reversed. The complement of the intersection of A and B is equal to A complement union B complement. I do want to remind you that one gimmick for remembering this was the distributive property looks like it's happening, meaning that the complement got distributed to both A and B. But the operator in the middle, the set operation in the middle changed almost as if the complement went to the union and said, change, and it became an intersection. And that worked on both of them, where the complement got distributed to not only sets, but the operation per se, now, I'm not saying the complement of union is intersection and vice versa, but it's just a gimmicky way of remembering De Morgan's laws for set theory, saying that if you distribute a complement across a union or an intersection, everything gets complemented, including the union and the intersection, so to speak. Now, what does this have to do with logic? Well, from the previous video, and I hope you watched it, we determined that the following statements were logically equivalent. The negation of P and Q is logically equivalent to the negation of P disjunction, the negation of Q. Now, this is not a typo right here. This is a, a triple underline, excuse me, a triple lined equal sign, which is a very common symbol for the phrase is logically equivalent. So instead of equal, it's kind of like equals, but it's really translated is equivalent to, or in this context, is logically equivalent to. But we showed that these were logically equivalent. And if you'll notice, we kind of had the same phenomenon that when we quote unquote distribute the negation, it did negate the simple statements, but the connective in the middle also got turned upside down almost as if the negation were distributed to it and it told it turn upside down. This is the exact same story we just said for the uh, De Morgan's laws for set theory. So what are the strong similarities? Well, it's even stronger than just the distributive prop, the distributive nature of it. This connective is the symbol for the word and, but do you remember the word in set theory that indicated intersection? How do you get to be in an intersection? If you're in A and you're in B, and on top of it, both of them look like they're pointing in the same direction. Same thing with union and disjunction. Disjunction is the symbol for the word or, but how did you get to belong to a union? Like if I said, uh, are you in the union of people born in Texas? Are you, in, are you in people born in Texas union uh, males? How do you get to be in that union? If you were born in Texas or you're male or possibly both. So union and disjunction both kind of resemble the word or. Disjunction flat out is the word or. Intersection and conjunction are the word and. And it doesn't take a big stretch of the imagination to think that complement and negations are somehow kind of linked together as well. So some very strong connections between the set operations in set theory and our connectives and negation in um, symbolic logic. As such, this is one of De Morgan's laws for logic. It's worth highlighting. For any statements P and Q, the negation of P conjunction Q is logically equivalent 
to the negation of P disjunction, the negation of Q. Uh, another way of saying that is the negation of a conjunction is the disjunction of the negations. And the order of the words is very important there because this says the negation of a conjunction and that's what this is, the negation of a conjunction. But this says the disjunction of the negations. You could also say that the negation of a and is an or and vice versa. The negation of an and is an or and vice versa. Actually, I shouldn't have said the vice versa part yet because that kind of takes the wind from the sails of what I'm about to say next. But there were two De Morgan's laws in set, in, a, in set theory. So are there two De Morgan's laws for logic? Getting ahead of myself once again. All right, so uh, let's just pick it up from here. Uh, one uh, of De Morgan's laws for logic says the negation of a conjunction is the disjunction of the negations, the statement here. So let's use De Morgan's law to rewrite the following as an equivalent statement. It is not the case that I am hungry and I am thirsty. Now, must you translate this into symbols? I would argue no, but let's go ahead and do it real quick. Let's say that I am hungry is P, I am thirsty is Q. There's an and, so that's a conjunction, P and Q, but that's all preceded by it is not the case that, which is the buzz phrase for negation of a compound statement. But this is precisely this right here. Let's put that in a different color. That is precisely the left half of that logical equivalence, which means that we can rewrite it as this. If I can get my, there we go. Distribute the negation and change the connective, but how would that translate back into words? Back into words, that would translate to negation P, I am not hungry, disjunction or negation Q, I am not thirsty. So this statement is logically equivalent to the one that we were given. Specifically, the statement, it is not the case that I am hungry and I am thirsty is the same as I am not hungry or I am not thirsty. The negation of a disjunction is a conjunction. I just said that backwards again. The negation of a conjunction is a disjunction. I keep alluding to the fact and flat out saying that there's another uh, De Morgan's law for logic, so let's get right to it. There are two De Morgan's laws in set theory. The other one was this, that the complement of a union is equal to the intersection of the complements, which naturally should raise the question, does this have a similar variation in symbolic logic? And it's not written, so we're going to write it. The negation of P disjunction Q is that logically equivalent to the negation of P conjunction negation Q. Remember, the complements are essentially negations in this context. The union is essentially a disjunction because both mean the word or. The intersection is essentially a conjunction because both mean the word and. So is that true? Are they actually logically equivalent? Well, how would we show that two statements are logically equivalent? We build their truth tables and see if they have the same final columns. So let's go ahead and determine if the negation of the disjunction of P and Q, if this is logically equivalent to the conjunction of the negations of P and Q, that. You can tell I've already got the first truth table set up here. That is the truth table for the one that is currently highlighted. 
And at this point, your hierarchy of, log of connective skills should be sharp enough to know that we're going to do the parentheses first, followed by its negation. All right, let's fill this in pretty quickly. The first column is the disjunction of P and Q. The rule for disjunction is it's false only when it's all Fs. So that last row is the only row where the disjunction is false. Otherwise, it's true. And then, of course, the negation just says take the negation of this. So all we have to do is change the truth values and go false, 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 true. I knew I would regret shrinking the font size inside the truth table because the letters are getting all crowded. Let me see if I can make those a little bit better. False, 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 true. And now that we've got the truth table for the first statement, let's make the truth table for the second one. And I know what you're thinking. We know it's hiding underneath a little white rectangle. You're gonna unhighlight it. Well, you're partially right. We're gonna make the truth table for that, but let's think about it for a second. Doesn't it start with the same first two columns, P and Q? So wouldn't it be redundant to start a brand new table with the exact same columns as we have over here? It would be. When you're building the truth table for two statements to compare their final columns, you can actually do this. Just start the second truth table at the end of the first one. And you'll notice I put a double vertical line here. That is pretty common to say that we've ended one truth table and we're starting another one. But there's no need to repeat these two columns because they're already there for us to use. Now, because we are about to be building this truth table, based on these columns and there's this bunch of stuff in between, it might benefit you to temporarily cover up these guys with a piece of paper, with a, a writing utensil or whatever, so that they're not in your way. All right, let us, well, first let's get rid of this. That's kind of in the way, don't need that. All right, let's complete the rest of the second truth table efficiently. This is negation of P, which is the opposite of this column over here. So false, false, true, true. And this is the negation of Q, which is the negation of this column over here, which is false, true, false, true. Okay, now we just have to perform in this last column, the conjunction of the previous two columns, the ones that still have arrows over them. And remember that the rule for conjunction is it's true only when the whole row is true. and the bottom row is the only row that is all true. So the bottom row in the last column is the only one that's all true, which means the rest of them are false. And now let's compare. Because remember, we are comparing the last column of the truth table for the first statement and the last column for the truth table of the second statement. And if you notice, they are exactly the same. Thus, the negation of P dis disjunction Q and the negation of P conjunction negation of Q are logically equivalent, which means yes, the other half of what we thought would be De Morgan's law is precisely that. So let's summarize De Morgan's laws for logic and then we'll take a look at a few examples. Number one, the negation of P 
conjunction Q is logically equivalent to the negation of P disjunction, the negation of Q. Again, it kind of has that distributive flair to it where the negation gets distributed to the two simple state to the two statements, but also kind of gets distributed to the conjunction and turns it into a disjunction. I do this because none of that's actually true. It's just a gimmick. The second of De Morgan's laws for logic is the same, except you switch the connectives. The negation of a disjunction is logically equivalent to the conjunction of the negations. And both are sort of distributive. You just have to remember to change the connective. I thought there was something down here, but I guess not. All right, let's just take a look at a few examples and then we'll be done with this video. Write the negation for the following statements. Studying is necessary and I am a hard worker. Now remember, we're being asked to write the negations of these, which means we're essentially being asked to put a negation in front of, uh, give me one second to make some space here. There we go. If we're gonna write the negation of this, let's go ahead and just put a negation in front of it, locate the connective and think about what's going to happen. According to De Morgan's laws for symbolic logic, this negation is not only gonna negate each half of that conjunction, but it's also gonna turn the conjunction into a disjunction. In other words, the negation of an and statement is an or statement. So how would this go? Well, let's start by negating the first statement. Studying is necessary, and the negation of that is studying isn't necessary. Since we're taking the negation of an and, it will become an or. I am, negation is not a hard worker. So again, when you take the negation of a conjunction of an and statement, each half gets negated, but the and becomes an or. Let's take a look at the next example. Shoplifting is a felony or dis misdemeanor. Let's change the color here. All right, if we want to take the negation of this, In this case, the two simple statements aren't, aren't whole sentences. We have shoplift, shoplifting is a felony or misdemeanor, but remember that shorthand for shoplifting is a felony or shoplifting is a misdemeanor. We have a disjunction and or. We'll take the negation of each half and it will become an and, a conjunction. And so our answer is, negation of the first statement is, Shoplifting isn't a felony. Negation of an or is an and. And shoplifting isn't a misdemeanor. Now you may be wondering, can we collapse this into a shorter sentence like we did, uh, like the original problem was, but you tell me is the sentence shoplifting isn't a felony and misdemeanor confusing? I would think it is. I think it would be safer. Oh, it's not gonna let me unedit that. So I'll just have to retype it. I think it's safer to just say the entire sentence twice so that it's not easy to misunderstand or it's not as easy to misunderstand. All right, let's take a look at the last one. The patient needs an RN or an LN and she's very sick. Now this one's just a little bit more tre treacherous because if you'll notice, it has both a conjunction and a disjunction. If we take the negation of this, because that's what we're being asked to do. Did you say this statement is primarily a conjunction or a disjunction? Because there's an or and there's an and. Which one's the primary connective? It's the one following the comma. This is primarily a conjunction. And so the two halves of it are those two statements, the left of which is its own compound statement. It's a disjunction with an or in it. So let's attack it one piece at a time. If we were to take the negation of the left half of the and, it would be it is not the case that because that first statement is a compound statement in its own right. It is not the case that the patient needs 
an RN or an LN. And again, what, we basic, what we've basically done there is distribute the negation to the left half of the AND. It will turn the AND into an OR and then we'll negate the second half of it. Or, she's not very sick. Now, is this the best answer? I would argue no, because nobody really talks like this. And if you think about it, this second half, let's go orange here. This second half is another case of De Morgan's laws waiting to ha De Morgan's law waiting to happen because it's saying it is not the case of this. So it is the negation of that. So we can apply De Morgan's law again. Crazy, right? So what would it look like if we applied De Morgan's law, the, the pink negation across the orange compound statement? Well, it would negate the first statement, the patient doesn't need an RN, and it would change that OR to an AND, and doesn't need an LN, and then the rest of it already got taken care of, or she's not very sick. So that one was a little tricky because when we applied to Morgan's law to the conjunction, when we applied to Morgan's law to this part, the left half of it got negated, but that was the negation of a disjunction, excuse me, that was the negation of a disjunction. Stop that. And hence we had to apply De Morgan's law twice. Crazy, right? 